Hi there and welcome back to Pierpoint Custom Rod Building and Repair. In this video I'm just going to show you how to do a little bit of high build finish and uh, just show you some hints, tips, tools and techniques of how I actually approach that. We're going to be using the Gen 4 resin. So it's a brand new product from America and Pierpoint is the UK distributor for this. So we're going to be using this and we're just going to show you how to mix it up and how to get it on your rod. So before we start, so your rod's ready to go in the dryer, just make sure that it's nice and level to start with. So get a bubble on it and just make sure that it's nice and level to start life because when you come to put the resin on, obviously you want the best finish that you can possibly get. So it just needs to start off reasonably, reasonably flat. Okay, that's the first thing you do. So a couple of items that I would be using. I mean, let's start off with my brushes. So I've got a range of brushes that I can choose from. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you get the high build onto the rod. So I'm going to be using three specific brushes, so I'll just pick three out, and that's these three. Okay, so I've got uh, an eighth of an inch one, I've got a quarter of an inch, and I've also got the, the half inch. Nice soft bristles, I look after them, so I've had these for probably a couple of years. And then before I start, what I like to do is actually clean my brushes up. So you make sure that your hands are sort of grease free. So what I do, we've got this brush cleaner. So it's one that we use here at Pierpoint. We've got it specifically designed for us and this Gen 4 resin product. And we do sell this through the website. It's a 300 mil postal pack and it retails for about £9.99. So you get three times as much for your money. So what I do is I just put a little bit in there because I'm going to wash my brushes before I start. Okay, so I just give them a little dip okay just soften them up a little bit it just gets rid of any dust dirt debris and it won't hurt your high build finish okay and also it just helps the high build flow a little bit because you're already softening up the brushes okay so we'll just get rid of that and then we'll just wipe off the excess on a towel there okay so we've got our brushes ready to go okay so that's always a good start Okay, so what we then need to do is, if we look at our foil dish that we're going to use to mix the resin in, what I like to do is give that a wipe out as well. So I use ISO alcohol for that. So just put a drop in there. Okay, and then just give that a wipe out. Because sometimes it just gets a little bit of dust, dirt and debris in there. So it's always worth doing this. And also, somebody who's packed it may have put a greasy fingerprint in there. And you don't want any grease. So that's what I do is just give that a wipe out and sometimes you might find that the aluminium tarnishes a little bit and you'll just get a little bit of grey deposit there as well. So make sure you do that. So that's always a, a good little tip. Okay, so we're almost ready to go now. So I'm going to mix my high build up in this little dish and I'm going to just do that wrap for the purposes of this exercise then I'll do the rest of the rod off camera. So I'm going to be using my syringes and I'm going to be taking three 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 cc's of each okay so there's my hardener syringe there's my resin one and i'm just going to take it out of these bottles and mix it in there and i'm going to use my spatula to mix that up because you don't want to entrain too much air into it okay so we're almost ready to go now with this resin and it's due in the uk in a couple of weeks it's actually in flight as we speak from america so it's due to land pretty soon once you mix it it's got a pot life of 30 minutes and you can recoat within four hours and it's tack free in 10 hours and also the ideal temperature that you want this at in your workshop is about 70 degrees okay so we've got our little temperature gauge here that i use most of the time and we're showing at 24 degrees and rising so it's in the high 70s already okay which is pretty good and this works best in those conditions Okay, so a couple of little tips there for you. So let's get cracking. So we're going to start off with the hardener. So let's select the correct syringe. And then make sure that you select the correct bottle as well, because you don't want to cross-contaminate. Okay, so it's called the catalyst. And because the caps are white, I've just marked up on there H for hardener and then R for resin. So we've got the, the bottle there. And then we've got these self-seal caps in there so that you can actually insert the syringe in there then once you take the syringe out it's self-sealing and stops any dirt and stuff getting in there so what we're going to do is we're just going to put the syringe in there and then we're going to take out 
three three C's three CC's hopefully you can see that so we're just going to extract okay it's a brand new syringe and sometimes you will get this problem with it there's a little air bubble in there you could probably just about see that you can do one or two things you can either squeeze that back into the bottle okay or you can just pull it out again okay a little bit of air in there so I'm not too worried about that at this stage so we've got three cc's in there so we're going to put that into the into the dish okay so we've got three of hardener so just make sure that you put the cap back on because you don't want to get them mixed up and we do the same with that there and then we've got the the resin part of the mix we're going to do exactly the same with that get the syringe ready invert the bottle now with this one you can see that it's uh, slightly blue so it's got the the blue dye in it which protects it a little bit further from the uv contamination the sort of sunlight get into it and the hardener bottle is actually white just to further protect it from sunlight okay so we put that in there and we're going to extract three cc's out of there as well so hopefully you can see that again it's a brand new syringe you might just get a little bit of air in there and if you do just squeeze it back into the bottle okay and then start again so I'm not too worried about air coming into this at the moment because I know how good this is with the air release properties and it'll soon disappear okay so there we go so you've got three of each okay let's get that out of the way we're almost good to go so there's that and make sure you put the top back on okay so there's our resin and it's in the dish and you could probably see in there that you have got bubbles in there okay I'm not over overly concerned about that at this stage now what I like to do is to set my stopwatch for this because I know that the mix time is about three minutes okay and the pot life is 30 so if you set your stopwatch then you know exactly what scale you're working to here so using your spatula so you're not whipping it up okay you're just gently folding that in okay like that so this will take a little bit of time because it's two and a half minutes but what you'll notice is that once you bring these two together you get this exothermic reaction so it introduces heat to itself and then it's a heat from that mixing process that also helps to uh, disperse the bubbles so while you're mixing this you will see that the bubbles will start to release as this mixture gets a little bit thinner now it's it's cloudy okay so hopefully you can see that on the camera okay and there's a little bit of marbling in there which is to be expected you've got the blue dye so that'll help because it's a, a disappearing dye so once you do the mix it will run nice and clear now of course when you mix in just make sure you scrape down the edges as well that's important because if you don't mix this properly then you may get some tacky spots on your high build finish okay so hopefully you can see that being mixed and then so you can see the bubble so you're mixing this until it goes clear okay, I'm working a little bit cack handed here because of the the camera and then you can just see a slight marbling effect in there as well and you'll know that when you've you've mixed this correctly is that when the marbling obviously disappears okay but very important that you scrape down the sides okay so we're doing okay the metal foil dish will also start to help with the with the heat because it will help to dissipate it okay and you can see that this is already starting to go a little bit like water and it's that viscosity that's going to help with the the bubble release okay so temperature of your workshop is key and also the temperature of this resin and you can st start to see straight away that we're getting it nice and clear okay i'll just keep mixing that and the recommended time is about three minutes okay two and a half to three minutes will stand you in good stead so let me just have a look at my watch okay so we're on two and a half minutes at the moment just going to give that a bit more of a mix and hopefully you can see that's nice and clear now and we've got less bubbles in it because of that viscosity 
and then in a moment we're going to just get that on the rod. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Okay, and like I say, the Gen 4 resin, we are the UK distributor. It's en route as we speak from America. And it will be available very soon to purchase. It's got great technology, this. There's been some excellent reports about it. And that's why I'm just doing this little bit of a demo just to show you. Okay, and I use a spatula because it entrains less air. Okay, so I think we just about got that now. Okay, so there we go. There's a few bubbles in there, but let me just clean this up first. So I don't like throwing anything away, so I like to reuse things as well. Okay, so just give that a wipe. Now, by and large, for, for this, I'll probably just be using the one brush. Now, there's a few bubbles in there already. Okay, not too worried, because they will disappear. So what I like to do is get rid of the surface ones and just blow on it. Okay, and that just gets rid of the bigger ones on the top there. There's still a few in there. I'm not too worried about that because that's got good air release uh, capabilities, this. Okay. Now we need to get it on there. So the first thing I do is just put a, a glove on to protect my hand. So if you've got any sort of skin complaints and things like that, you just might want to protect that. Now while we have been talking, the rod might have just got a little bit of uh, dust on it. A bit of a dusty old workshop. So just make sure, I just use a low tack um, masking tape there just to get off that surface dust. Okay, for some reason the carbon rods do like to attract the dust. Okay, so it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if you leave your resin there. Um, don't forget that heat is just working through that resin okay so you can give it a, an extra minute or two just to sit there and it'll just help obviously with that bubble release okay so I'm quite happy with that okay so we're going to get going and we're just going to load that on so when I do my rod I do like it to turn towards me I just find that easier okay and we're going to put two coats on so I'm just going to show you how I do 